Half a day and welcome to the University of Guam edition of A Higher Degree, the first episode of 2014. Mm -hmm. I'm Jonas Macapinlack, the Director of Integrated Marketing Communications here at the University of Guam. And I'm Norman Analista, Director for Development and Alumni Affairs. And in this particular show, we have a very exciting lineup. We'll have the top news from the campus in our Triton News segment. And we're also going to talk to Mr. George Chu, who is the 2013 Guam Business Magazine Executive of the Year and the 2013 Distinguished Alumni from the School of Business and Public Administration. And later, we'll hear from students who filmed themselves for a full day to showcase what a day in the life of a UOG Triton looks like. And now, it's time for Triton News. In our top story, the University of Guam spring semester is in full swing. At this time, we're happy to report a 4% increase uh, in enrollment over spring 2013. Uh, official enrollment numbers, they'll be available a little bit later uh, this week. And the Isla Center for the Arts has been showcasing its faculty biennial since early December. It features works such as paintings, sculptures, and photographs by UOG Fine Arts faculty. And the exhibit will continue through February 7th. Our Katrina Palanca has that story. Today, I'm here at the Isla Center of the Arts where the UOG Fine Arts Faculty Biennial is currently on display. The exhibit features recent artwork created by University of Guam professors Rick Castro, Louis Rifkowitz, Joe Babalta, and adjunct instructors Lindsay Kane, Perry Perez, and Victor Gonzaga. This year's exhibition features an array of media from acrylic paintings to metal sculptures to prints and photographs. The Faculty Biennial, which comes around every two years, showcases the artwork that the fine arts professors have been working on during that time. As part of a new tradition, the Isla Center invited Emeritus Fine Arts Professor Robert Shinovsky to exhibit his work along with the current faculty. Ji Young Wang, gallery assistant at the Isla Center, speaks on Shinovsky's interactive piece. Basically, he has a blank sheet of paper with some pencils, and he asks all our visitors to come by um, who would like to participate if you know, they could please see the, his artwork, um, write down their opinions. Robert plans to collect his viewers' thoughts and ideas and incorporate it into his next work. For Professor Rick Castro, hiking Guam's jungles provided the inspiration for his collection. The 23 paintings in the exhibit are just a glimpse of an entire series that Castro's been working on for nearly 10 years. It's grown to over 100 paintings, so, so the show you see now sort of wraps up the whole series. The anchor piece for the collection was a commissioned painting for the new hospital, Guam Regional Medical City. Entitled Suruhanu's Laboratory, the artwork reflects the importance of natural medicine. It was basically through metaphor that I was trying to communicate the importance of our, our jungles here and some of the herbal medicines that our Surahanos use as natural healing procedures for, for patients. And they would be in metaphor the doctors, of course, the, the jungle being the hospital itself. The UOG Faculty Biennial will be on display until February 7. Isla Center for the Arts is open to the public Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. UOG Green and the Center for Island Sustainability has continued their efforts to promote green initiatives throughout the island and region, including cutting down on food waste. Gabby Franquez has a story. With Guam's population increasing, more waste is entering our landfill, which has a limited capacity. A small group at the university is helping with this issue. Here at the University of Guam Food Court, there are designated bins for certain food waste. To elaborate more is UOG intern Meg Cardero. So the cafeteria monitoring project started in January 2013. And the purpose of this project is to educate um, the UOG community on, on how they can properly separate their trash when they come to the cafeteria um, to eat lunch or breakfast. And the sole purpose for this, for this project is to divert as much trash as we can from going into the lads and lads. UOG Center for Island Sustainability Coordinator Elvie Tyler further explains the green initiative here at the university. 
The goal of the UOG Green Initiative is to develop a sustainable campus environment to serve as a model for our island and our region. It focuses on recycling, education and outreach, renewable and alternative energy. Daryl Garcia, a freshman majoring in music, shares his thoughts on the university's sustainability efforts. So far, I think what University of Guam is doing, they're heading in the right direction. They have the bins, they have it all over campus, there's signs, go green. There's people behind the bins even helping you sort it out. I think this is a perfect step right now. All students interested in participating and contributing to the UOG Green Initiative are more than welcome to. LV Tyler shares how students can get involved. The UOG Green can be reached at House 32, where we have a sustainable model home. Students can participate with the UOG Green Army or be part of the team of the UOG Green Intern Program. And we ask all faculties to please contact us should they want to have a presentation in their classroom about island sustainability. Reporting from the University of Guam's Food Court, I'm Gabby Franquez. Thank you, Gabby. The pre-engineering program at UOG has been steadily growing with an engineering annex construction project on the horizon. UOG hopes to eventually develop a full engineering program. One of the highlights for pre-engineering students is a spaghetti bridge competition where students building bridges using pasta and testing the strength and structure of a bridge by adding weight until it finally breaks. Sounds pretty interesting. Well, with that story is Catherine Bungabong. On November 27th, five teams of students from the pre-engineering program put their knowledge to the test to see whose contraption was the best constructed. Two teams of three students came in tie where both bridges were able to sustain a weight of 55 pounds each. Spaghetti bridge competitions are held internationally to test the strength and reasoning put into the construction of bridges that consist of spaghetti and various pasta. It is a fun outlet for engineering students to apply their knowledge and to test their problem-solving skills. We decided the first course of action would be to look at all the previous winners you know, internationally. Um, we also did a bunch of calculations and then from then on we experimented with different types of glues, different types of pastas. The Spaghetti Bridge competition started at the university after the pre-engineering program was established in 2011. The university plans to expand the program into a full-fledged bachelor's degree in the near future. Students in the pre-engineering program are excited to hear about the plan. I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm not going to be here for, for it to get grown to fruition, but I look forward to seeing a, a lot of future engineers on Guam get into the program and you know, help Guam however it needs to be helped. Dr. Marathi from the pre-engineering department says that establishing a four-year program for engineering will help keep students on island so that the demand of professionals from the field may come from within the community. They are extending this program to the four-year civil and environmental engineering program in near future. So we hope that we can have a student stay in here and, and continue working in Guam because this is a, they, 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 because the engineering firm in here they, not, they don't need to bring the engineer from outside the island so they can keep the local engineer in Guam. Reporting for a higher degree, I am Catherine Bungabong. That's all for news. Stay tuned after the break where our in-studio guest will be 2013 UOG Distinguished Alumni Award winner and 2013 Guam Business Magazine Executive of the Year Award winner, Mr. George Chu. I like that. Yeah, I like that. You gotta like that. What's not to like? Like, like, like. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, I like. Oh, I definitely like that. Mm, that too, I like that one. I like it. Like, that's weird. I like this, yeah. There's a whole lot of liking going on. That's right, we're too cool not to like. Like us on Facebook today. What do you like? I like it. <laughs> I liked that yesterday. And welcome back to A Higher Degree. I'm Norman Annalisa, the Director for Development and Alumni Affairs. 
And with me in this segment is none other than Mr. George Chu, who is the Executive Vice President of Tan Holdings Corporation. And what an honor it is to have you on the show, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. It's an honor for me, too. And you know, we're, we're particularly excited about uh, featuring Mr. Chu in this segment because he most recently won the 2013 Guam Business Magazine Executive of the Year. And I know having been a part of the business community for many years, uh, that is a very coveted title. But not to mention, uh, that's not the only reason why we're excited about him being on the show. It's also because he also won the Distinguished Alumni Award in 2013. He was one of five individuals uh, from the University of Guam who were given that distinction last year and uh, he uh, received the reward, uh, the award as a part of the School of Business and Public Administration. That's correct. It's uh, <laughs> two for two. It's been an incredible uh, string of luck if you ask me. Yeah, but it's it's quite, a hon uh, quite an honor to win both awards in, in the same year. So it's um, Definitely something that made me very happy, but at the same time, I'm very humbled by winning both awards. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people will say that luck didn't have a lot to do with it. Of course, the hard work uh, <laughs> and all the uh, major accomplishments that have are been a part of your career. So, um, for the benefit of our audience, let's just talk a little bit about the uh, Guam Business uh, Award uh, first. What was involved with the selection process? Well. Um First of all, you had to be nominated. I was actually nominated by uh, George Lai, who is the president of the Chinese Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. of Guam. And after the nomination has been accepted, you fill out the application packet. Uh, it was a pretty extensive application packet. And once that's been submitted, uh, the winner is, I guess, chosen by the previous 31 winners of the award. So it's... Uh, so clearly that this award has been around for over 30 years then. Well, it's actually, I'm the yeah. 32nd winner, so it's been around for 32 years, yes. Amazing. And um, I know that some previous winners include the likes of uh, Mr. Bob Jones, my former boss at Triple J Enterprises, and I think Mr. Mark Pangolinan, and uh, a host of other uh, very distinguished business people. So you are joining the, the company of some very well-known uh, men and women, right? Yeah, Norm, that's a, <laughs> that's a really good point. If you go through and look at the list of winners, it's... Uh, really an honor to be selected and to be, in, be inducted into this so-called so Guam Business uh, Executive of the Year. Uh, those past 31 winners are head and shoulders above probably anything I've ever done, so it's definitely a great honor for me. Wow, that's exciting news. And uh, let's, let's learn a little bit more about what you do at uh, Tan Holdings where you're the Executive Vice President. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a really good question. A lot of people ask me what exactly, you, uh, what exactly I do, and I guess the best way to explain it is uh, I always joke around and I say that I'm a maintenance man or uh, I'm a fireman or, uh, or a janitor. Okay. Basically, you know, we oversee so many different companies. Mm -hmm. I usually have to pay attention to the ones that have problems. Mm. And so people would ask me, hey, are you busy? And I'll say, yes, I'm busy. And their normal response is, well, if you're busy, that's good. And in my mm -hmm. case, in my job, if I'm busy, it's not good. Mm. If everything's running smoothly, if all the companies are running smoothly, I'm not busy. I can spend all my time on the golf course. So when I'm busy, that means things are not going well. And that pretty much is basically my job, to go out there and, uh, and troubleshoot all the companies that I oversee. So when you say you're the janitor, you're actually cleaning up shop or you're the fireman you're putting out fires <laughs> and all that exactly um, yes interesting yeah. and how long have you been with tan holdings now uh, i started with them in 1992 so it's been 22 we'll be going on 22 years this year really? time really flies and and with regard to some of the subsidiaries uh, that tan holdings uh, is comprised of okay i guess um you know, a lot of people really don't know Tan Holdings, uh, if that's the corporation name, but if you've lived on Guam long enough, uh, you probably know our subsidiary companies. If you ever want to go to the movies and you've mm -hmm. been to the Micronesian Mall or, or Gannon Shopping Center, mm -hmm. Tango Theaters is part of Tan that's Holdings. Right. If anyone has ever eaten ice cream at Dryers or uh, gone bowling at the Century Plaza, mm -hmm. that's a Tan Holdings operation. If you've gone to our World Cafe Buffet at the Fiesta Hotel. The Fiesta Guam Resort is another Tan One Holdings operation. One of my favorite buffets, by the way. <laughs> well, I heard a lot of positive comments about that from it's the great. local community. Yeah. Yeah. Probably the biggest problem we have at that hotel mm -hmm. is parking because it, we get a huge mix of locals uh -huh. uh, coming in for lunch and dinner. Mm -hmm. And it's been very surprising for me because I think it's very difficult mm -hmm. to get a mix of tourists and locals. And when you do that, you, that's actually the recipe for a very successful mm -hmm. business. You need to have both. Yeah. Wow. So. 
um, some of our lesser known businesses is probably our logistics company and and anybody that ever picked up mail from the US post office we actually have an aviation company called Asia Pacific Airlines which is a US certified 121 carrier that brings in the mail from Honolulu to Guam so anybody that's received a package mm -hmm. or order anything online is one of our companies and then to uh, a couple other companies that are probably not as well known in terms of the name mm -hmm. It's probably Dickerson and Quinn and Cosmos Distributing. Mm -hmm. But uh, you may not know the name of those companies, but you definitely use their products. Definitely the we brands. The wholesale, uh, yeah, yeah, the brands. I mean, mm -hmm. Dickerson and Quinn. Who doesn't eat spam on Guam? Oh, yeah. Who? <laughs> who? <laughs> you know, Dickerson and Quinn represents Hormel. Most people, we look at spam, we call it spam. But spam is actually made by Hormel Corporation, and it's a, it's a huge, uh, huge product here on the island. Um, we also distribute Tide and Gain, so if you do laundry, you probably use one of our products. At yeah. Cosmos, um, mm -hmm. we have companies like um, Ferrero Rocher, which is the chocolate that you see in the gold foil, right. in the round balls, and then uh, yeah. General Mills cereal. So, you know, that's a very ho common household yeah. uh, item. And mm -hmm. um, so definitely, I mean, these are all wonderful products and brands that uh, you directly oversee and uh, it must be really exciting in your position that uh, I, I, I have to ask the question, you know, when you attended the University of Guam, um, what courses or what experiences uh, did you take away that you felt have, have actually shaped you into the, the man you are today? <laughs> well, you know, when, when uh, the university today is in great shape under the leadership of uh, Dr. Underwood. He's really, uh, I'm really, really impressed by the University of Guam today. Uh, 1988, you know, when I started attending over there, we, we didn't have such nice buildings and uh, the curriculum at University of Guam back then, I think you were looking at education, nursing and business. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously uh, I'm afraid of the sight of blood, so nursing was never going to be for me. <laughs> I'm probably mm -hmm. a terrible teacher, so I couldn't do education, so I chose business, and I, at the time, I think uh, I chose accounting mm -hmm. because that would probably afford me the best opportunity to find a job upon graduation, so. It's amazing, and you know, one of the reasons why we we were so excited to have you in the show is because obviously you are a shining example of uh, an alumnus who has made a success of yourself and would be a shining example for a lot of the alumni, you know, that uh, we're, we're trying to reach out to. Uh, what sort of advice would you give to them as they are, you know, f trying to find their way and, and uh, make marks in their own careers? Well, I think um, <clears throat> the first and most important thing is it doesn't where you go to college. It doesn't matter which university you graduate fr from. It's what you put into it. It's your effort that you put into it. You know, a lot of people go, I, you know, you look, talk to a lot of these high school seniors here and go, I don't want to go to the University of Guam. But I'm telling you, the University of Guam is a great school. Uh, the classroom size affords a lot more individual attention from your professors. Mm -hmm. Unlike when you go to the States, I've been to school, I mean, I've been to school in the States. You go into a lecture room in the school in the States, you got 500 students attending. That's the professor teaching that class. Then after that class is over, you break up into discussion groups, which mm -hmm. are led by basically graduate students. So you never see the professor but once a week. Hmm. Here at the University of Guam, the professor teaches each and every class. You right. see them every single time. Absolutely. So you, you, you actually, I think, you, you have the opportunity to get a better education. You just got to overlook the fact that, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to your University of Guam. Some people want to carry that like a chip on their shoulder. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's what you get out of the mm -hmm. education process, which is the most important. So don't look at, don't look at, say, oh, this is, a, this is only UOG. No, it's not only UOG. It's what you put into it and it's what you're going to get out of it. Absolutely. And I really wish we had more time to talk to you. Um, so we're about ready to wrap up the segment. But I have one last question for you, um, or at least uh, one opportunity to get your feedback. You, you have served in the uh, UOG Endowment Foundation Board for many years now. And uh, you really took it upon yourself to give back to the university um, in various ways. Um, we're, we're really trying to reach out to more of our alumni to, to appeal to them to give back to the university. What was it that made you want to uh, do that? Well, I think, you know, um, Guam's my home. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lived here pretty much my whole life. I went to, attended and graduated from the University of Guam. I think it's really important to reach out and give back to, uh, to the University of Guam and to the community. I wouldn't be where I was today if I didn't graduate from the University mm -hmm. of Guam. It basically uh, made my career. It was, it was amazing. I, I, uh, 
close to graduation, I was being um, called upon by the various CPA firms uh, at that time was Deloitte and Touche mm -hmm. and um, KPMG PMR. They were actually actually actively recruiting. So it, it goes to show. I mean, if you you put in the effort, the University of Guam can provide you the solid foundation to build your career upon. And I think that's one thing. I found like, you know, it gave me the opportunity to start, so it's my responsibility to give back to the University of Guam and the, and the community where I live. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. George Chu. Really appreciate your time. And uh, we'll catch the show at the other side of the break. Get the story from the Pacific News Center. Get both sides. Get it right. Get it from reporters you can trust. Clint Rogel, Janella Carrera, Betsy Brown, Roselle Romanas, and Kevin Kerrigan. We've got the story. You can get it too. The Pacific News Center. News you can trust. Welcome back to the UOG edition of A Higher Degree. In studio with me uh, now is Giselle Valencia, a senior nursing student. I mean, a junior nursing student, mm -hmm. and uh, Julius Naranjo, who is a recent graduate of the university. Now, they recently filmed themselves for a full day along with three other University of Guam students uh, to show folks what a typical day in the life of a Triton looks like. So wh why don't you guys tell me about the, that experience? Julius? It was, a, it was an interesting experience. Um, we basically had to go throughout our whole day and basically we had to film everything we did that we felt was i would say eventful in a way well our days are pretty eventful so i i, I felt i thought it was a very interesting um interesting um, thing to do we'll, we'll watch the video in a little bit but uh actually giselle kind of starts off the video don't you yeah <laughs> I was driving to school. Um, last semester was practically the hardest semester I've had in the nursing program so far. And it was interesting because Julius asked me if I could film my life. <laughs> and that was only the beginning of the semester. So um, people think that's um, the normal like, amount of duties I do in a day, but that's half of what I do. Last semester, we, we had a lot of you know, chapter street. We had med surge and pathophysiology, and we also had clinicals, and to top it off with paperwork. Paperwork is not um, more than 10 pages long after your clinical hours. So wow. Well, as a nursing student, though, we know you guys are always busy, right? Always got a lot to do, a lot of studying. In fact, I think uh, your, your segment ends with you studying, right? Yeah, it always. Um, um, studying, for us, we have to read it a couple times. And it, we have a test every week, sometimes twice a week, and the chapters are about eight chapters per book. So we have about 16 chapters um, to read by the next week. But this semester is different, but it's still a lot of um, chapters to read. Okay, well, I mean, if you had something to tell your fellow Tritons right now uh, about the Triton experience, let's say you're talking to a student who hasn't yet decided to come to the university, uh, what, would you, what would you tell them? I would tell them, University of Guam is a good college, it's a good university, excuse me. You just have to pick, you have to know what you're doing and when you pick your major, make use of um, what you're learning because you learn a lot of different things. You think that Guam's a small island, but you meet a lot more people. And you have to, it, like what um, Mr. Chu said, it's the amount of work you put into it. That's um, right. how you feel that the full University of Guam experience. Right, great. Julius, as a recent graduate, uh, currently, uh, and I, actually, I, most of you don't know this, but Julius actually is one of our uh, uh, video editors <laughs> and one of our videographers for our Triton news program uh, segments, and also for uh, he edited this day in the life of the Triton video. So, Julius, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of that experience? Because you're a health sciences major, yes. but you were also doing some uh, video production. Well, basically, the, the, the video production was, it, it really just um, started off as a hobby. It's just, um, just making videos since high school and, and middle school and just, just really being interested in, in um, camera work, video work. So it, it just really, um, it, it was a hobby that turned into something that I can, I can use as um, 
mm-hmm. means of income while I'm going to, to school. And um, the way I look at it as um, with, my ma- with my major in health science, I feel that um, in order for me to be a good um, personal trainer or, or whatever I look to do uh, in the coming years, I think it'll, be, it'll, it'll help promotion-wise, marketing-wise. And I feel that having this, having this um, experience would also save costs on having to market or promote uh, myself as a as a personal trainer or um, as a certified health specialist. All right. So you're in for a treat. We uh, we currently have the video online on our UOG website at www.uog.edu, so you can view it there. Uh, but we've got it here for its uh, network television premiere, uh, Day in the Life, starring Giselle Valencia, Julius Naranjo, and uh, three other University of Guam students. We'll be right back. Uh, enjoy the video. Good morning. I'm on the road now, leaving Jotnyan, heading to school. Sad days. Just joking. It's Thursday morning, and I'm heading into my internship at Custom Fitness. Today is the day that I record my day for you. So, it's about 6 in the morning, and I'm driving. I'm just walking in the road right now. First exam, what do you guys think? Right. <laughs> I'm driving to the uh, student life officer's office because we have a meeting about our student organization. Hi, I'm practicing for my checkup tomorrow. Okay. I just got done with training. Now I'm gonna head to work. It's done. Heading to the field house. Get my boyfriend so we can go have lunch. Unlimited dining option for UOG. For lunch. Hi guys, going to A baby day. I'm at the business building because I have an AMA meeting. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm doing, are you doing a video? I'm doing a video right now. No. Hey, look, I know you're Welcome. Uh, I'm so tired. So I just got here at the field house and I'm going to shoot the student assembly and do some interviews with my co-worker. It'll be interesting what's going to happen. Alright, time to go. Alright, so this is the student assembly. We are in third floor. We're heading to our first next week. And here's the ward. Bye bye, gonna meet our mentor or our preceptor. Bye bye.
I'm here working for the alumni mixer. Test on Monday. It's about 1 a.m. I'm still studying. On a Friday. Oh, what fun. Ready for bed. It's 11 o'clock. I'm going to sleep with my cat Orion, who's resting on my chest. Good night. Good night. And that'll do it for this edition of A Higher Degree. For Jonas Michael Pinlack, I'm Norman Analista. Have a safe one, everyone.